Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, July 6, 2022. If you watch regularly, you already know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it again. We're only going to get one of these days, so let's make it a good one. Not a whole lot of things you can do better than hanging out with good folks, talking about good things like mules and donkeys. My name's Dave. This is Steve Edwards. And for the next 60 minutes, we are your tour guides into the theme park of equine awesomeness. Namely, the mule and the donkey. Uh, we just got done celebrating the 4th of July over here in uh, the States. Steve, how was your 4th of July celebration? I was up at Apache Lake throwing fishing plugs in the water, but nothing in the water wanted my fishing plugs. Mm, but they say fishing is one of the best sports. You can go out there, uh, not experience any success, and have the time of your life. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Hey, do we have any fishermen or fisher ladies in the audience today? Go ahead and put in the comment section. Tell us the biggest catch you've ever had. Put that in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know that you're watching. Matter of fact, uh, let's get this thing kicked off. There's really only three things that we need from you. In addition to hearing what your biggest catch ever was, uh, we want to know that you're watching. So put your name where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comments section. And we would love to say hello to you, to greet you. Put that in there in addition to what your biggest catch ever was. Let's hear from you. Second thing is this show is driven 100% by you, everything that you need. And so in order to make this show awesome, we need to know what it is you're working on and what questions we might be able to help you get answers for today so you can get back out there and experience results. So ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got. There is no dumb question out there. Uh, there's just the questions you don't know the answers to. And once you know the answer, you have the solution. You have the information you need. And it's no longer a question you don't have an answer to. Excuse me. <laughs> I was trying oh to fight it back, Steve, until you started to talk, and it was just not going to happen. It it came on like a freight train, and so uh, hey, it's called the body functions. That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you how the human body works. Uh, the yeah. third question, and y'all have been just fantastic about this. If you're on YouTube, please click like and then share buttons. Uh, share the broadcast with friends or family member, be it a text or send an email. If you're on Facebook, click the like and then the share button, and you can either uh, share it to your page or you can tag somebody in the comment section. So those three things with a bonus. The bonus is we want to know the largest fishing catch you've ever had. Put that in the comment section. That should be pretty fun. We'll get to that here in about five minutes or so. Your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like any and every mule and donkey question you got, and then share the broadcast. Uh, Steve, I think some folks are still uh, maybe a little bit hungover from the apple pie and the uh, the barbecue, so we're a little slow on the go for comments coming in here. Folks are watching, but they're just a little bit, moving a little bit slower on the text message. But we've got some all-stars here. We've got Julie Dean watching from Kentucky, where it is hot. We've got Raymond watching from Edmond, Oklahoma, where it is hot. We've got David O'Brien watching from East Texas, where it is 102 hot and humid. We've got uh, Vicki watching from Queen Creek, where I know it's hot. And she says 14-inch trout on the West Fork of the Black River. That's pretty wow. cool right there. How about My that? My wife caught a big sucker. What's that? My wife caught a big sucker. This 54 years ago. This guy right here. Yeah. What 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 was it? Like a nice 130 pounder 54 years ago? No, it was white short shorts, sloopy. <laughs> oh hey, hey, I know Susan's 11th. somewhere laughing real good. Yeah. The eleventh Monday is our fifty-fourth anniversary. My goodness. I remember when y'all were oh, celebrating tenth, your fiftieth and what's that? The tenth of, of of January of July. Tenth of July. I remember when y'all were celebrating your fiftieth. That feels like it was just yesterday. I can't believe we're four years past that. Yep. That's crazy. Uh, let's see. Rusty is watching from East Texas, where it is hot. Hannah is watching from Ocala, Florida, where it's 92 degrees and gorgeous. So Hannah's trying to uh, 
bring up jealousy in all of us here, uh, making herself the envy of the live stream. See if we Ross, can match humidity. What's that? See if we can match humidity. Yeah, we'll try and catch up there. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, <laughs> we've got um, we've got uh, Julie says uh, Gazoon tight. So Julie's uh, looking out for me there. Uh, let's see. Ross is uh, watching from Emmett, Idaho, where it's 90. Craig McVeigh is watching from Oklahoma, where it's 103. Raymond says, "My tw oh, he's got a question. So we'll start with our first question of the day. My 12-year-old Molly Mule has recently become really touchy occasionally. Do you have any advice? What would you say there to, uh, to Raymond? Touchy. Um... Uh... All over or just uh, in certain areas. Now, why does that matter? Well, it, it that does kind of matter. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, there, there could be a like maybe where somebody harpooned them with a spur, just as one example. But another thing, if they're kind of touchy in certain places, you know, they could have a, an intestinal problem. Uh, it could be they're just flat. They're, they're tired. You know, their back is wore down. So. Uh, it could be they need a rest. So he says just ears. Get an idea of touchy in the, the ears. Touchy in the ears? Oh, that's an easy one to fix. Ah, folks, listen. The, the biggest problem with mules and donkeys is you. And notice I got three fingers pointing toward me. Here's the deal. When you take a bridle off, Always loosen the bridle up two notches. Let the bit hang down. Tighten it to that third notch. Slide the bridle off with the head down and nose tip to the left. Slide the bridle down and take it off. Now, I just gave you kind of a big bale of hay there. Let's go back. How long is your brow band? What's the width of your, your brow band? That's the brand, the band that comes around the front. What is the length of that? Okay, that's one thing. Uh, the next thing is the type of bit. All right, now let's go back, let's go back again. Why is it so important to loosen the bit? Why? Because what happens is just a short time having your bit in the mouth of the mule, the mule will start getting a tender mouth. Yeah, it will do. And so their bars are being kind of pounded on and their teeth being tapped. And if you're a heavy handed person, it makes it even worse. Okay, now, so when we put a bridle on, we always, always, always want to have the mule pick up the bit and pack the bit. This is what's gonna happen. If you have a John mule, you have teeth in the front called the incisors. And then you got two sticking up right here called a canine. And then you have your molars in the back, back here, all right? So you let your bit hang down, bumping the canine on the John mule. That makes him uncomfortable, bump, bump, bump. He will say to himself, I've got to find a way to get comfortable. So he will pick the bit up and pack it and hold it where he likes it. Now, here's the thing. You don't know how long he's been screwed up. You don't. So don't expect it to just go boom and happen. This is something you are going to do. All you mule riders, all you donkey riders, every single time you put a bridle on, do not, imperative, do not put it on pre-adjusted. Always loosen it up, put the right ear first, left ear second. He picks up the bit, he puts it down. All he's doing is asking questions about it, y'all. That's all he's doing. So he picks it up, he puts it down. Picks it up, puts it down. Oh. Oh, he gets his tongue over top of it. That's okay. That's all right. All he's doing is asking questions. Where can I be the most comfortable with this thing in my mouth? So then he will pick it up and pack it and hold it. Don't get in a hurry. 
Don't get in a hurry to adjust it. Wait. Wait. You all got to remember, why did you buy your mule? Why did you get that donkey to escape the other world out there we call civilization? You bought this donkey. You got this mule so that you can sit back and enjoy life. Well, I got to hurry and put the bride on, get the seat on. You know, I kind of want to go ride. No, 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 no. It's not important to go ride. No, build a relationship with your mule first. Let your donkey know that you are the herd leader. Get that relationship set up so that they know that you are the herd leader. That's imperative. You have to have that. Okay, let's go back. How do we get them to drop their head, tip their nose to the left? I've got some videos on them. Basically, what you're going to do without the bridle on his head. Put your right hand behind the ears at the pole. Put the left hand up on the nose and wait. They don't like that kind of pressure. They don't like the pressure on their nose. They don't like the pressure on the pole. So as soon as they drop their head, you take your hand off, put your hand back on. And they think, okay, to get you to take the pressure off of my nose and off of my pole, all I got to do is drop my head. And they will. Okay. You never want to put a bridle on, a halter on, a come along rope on with the mule's head up in the air. Always down. Nose tip. Are we okay, Dave? Yeah, sorry about that. I, I clicked the wrong button. I was trying to get a uh, try and get a video queued up here. As a matter of fact, I've got it. Let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Uh, I've got a oh oh oh. Give me one second. Uh, video. Here we go. Oh, that's not it either. Video. Choose file. Right here. Take a look at this one. I'm heading on a mule that uh, has ear shy problems and, and this sort of thing. So again, we go through the same process, tipping the head to the left. Notice how she has her hand on the halter and the mule's kind of on the fight, but she goes to rubbing on him. And we're not interested in putting the bit in right now. We're interested in putting the bridle up over the ears. And all of my mule riders, martingales, and my regular bridles have a lot of ear uh, room, especially my mule riders, martingales, because they are training. Uh, they are for training. As you can see, that mule riders, martingale, is. Uh, uh, made out of beta and there she goes up over the one ear then the other, next ear. Notice we're not putting the bit in right now. She rubbed on him. Does this still hold up Steve? Bridle. You can see how yep. big an ear area we've got. We've got a lot of room and that's what you want when you're training these colts. A lot of room so that you don't pester those ears. And notice how she went over the ears. Didn't try to put in one ear at a time right now. And she, notice she's now going back petting, scratching, rubbing on the mule. That's what we want. We want to be able to pet and scratch on them and get them relaxed. And once they get relaxed and, and this sort of thing, then we go back and now we put the bit on. Now notice what she's going to do. She's going to use her little finger and go over uh, and rub the inside of the mouth on the right hand side. So we'll change the camera settings here and work over there and see what she's going to do. She's going to take her middle finger and she's going to rub on the bar of the mouth. Notice how loose she's loosened up the bit. She's getting the bit set up in her hand so that she can use her middle finger and rub the bar of the mouth. And then of course the mule's a little concerned right now, but she's rubbing 
rubbing. No, notice the mouth starting to open. Why you want to rub like, like that, Steve? You want to rub the bar of the, of the mouth so that it makes it feel good and they're comfortable. See, she's rubbing on there pretty good right now, so the mule kind of got quiet. Notice I'm using the combination of the come along rope and the halter together with that bridle. This was an ear shy mule that somebody had dinked around with, unfortunately, and is a possible phenol mule, but this mule was hard headed, all hard headed. But you see, that was an ear shy mule. Why was it ear shy? The guy before was a horse trainer and he put on too small of a bridle and made the mule ear shy because he was bending the ears over. It's okay to bend the ears over, okay it is. But now go back to the, to the, to the rub and the bars of the mouth. That middle finger, that one right there, okay? When you take and rub that inside bar, that makes that mule comfortable. He'll, he'll go to feel like that and say, oh man, there's his head dropped, his head dropped and look at that, she slid the bit in. Now it ain't perfect, but it's better than what it had. And now she's rubbing it again and he's clamping his teeth, but she's back to rubbing the bars. When you rub the bars, that feels really good to the meal. Really good. Well, there we are. That's, that was one of my apprentices back about, hmm, what, seven, eight years ago, something like that. Yeah, quite a while. Very good. Glad good. I was able to bring that up. Uh, Craig is watching from Central Oklahoma. Hey, real quick. What's the biggest catch y'all have had fishing? Put that in the comment section. We've got a couple so far. Let's have some more. Craig's watching from Central Oklahoma. It's 103. Lee and Sissy are watching from California, 82 and windy. How y'all doing? Hey, Lee, Sissy, we are doing great. Look at Steve right there. He got a big smile on his face and he got a donkey hat. He's happy. Uh, let's see. Julie is watching from Mount Vernon, Washington. Uh, Julie, how was the tulip festival up there? 73 degrees and overcast. John's watching from Springville, Utah, 94 degrees. Th caught a 30 pound lake trout. That's a big old lake trout there. Way to go, John. Uh, right. Let's see. Uh, Raymond says it's really tough to get the come along hitch on her. Really tough to get the come along hitch on her. Well, that's where it's more important to drop the head, tip the nose to the left. That's where it's important. Get that part of it done first. We kind of showed a, a variety of things during when we were shooting this thing, but this is one of the things that we had done as well using the rope halter uh, so that when the mule jerked back, that the rope halter bumped the pole, but it gave this little trainer, this little girl couldn't weigh 80 pounds soft and wet. She just a little thing, okay? But it gave her the leverage that she needed to get the mule to stand still to see that she wasn't going, this mule wasn't abused physically. It was more abused because people were using the wrong bridles, okay? So when it comes down to the come along hitch, do you see how she used the martingale to rub the head, rub the head, rub the head, rub the head, and then finally put the bridle on? Do the same thing with the come along hitch, okay? Now get this in your mind, folks. It's not important to, to put the bridle on or to put the come along on. It is important that the mule drops his head, tips his nose to the left. When that gets done, the mule loosens all five major neck muscles, loosens the pole, loosens the throat latch, and the mule is quiet and comfortable. When the mule gets on a fight, don't, just, you see her, she just relaxed. She gave it a couple little bumps with the come along hitch one time, but she just slid it right in. Does it take a little time? Yes. Good. Uh, Jackie's watching from Placidas, New Mexico, currently 86 and cloudy. Rode Annie for the first time yesterday in the round pen. Hoping Annie is a mule or a donkey. Uh, been working with her for one and a half years. She did great. Can't wait for the next ride. Could not have been, could not have done it without you, Steve, and your wonderful training and clinic. Eternally grateful. Jackie, that's awesome to hear. How awesome is that? Steve, you've been working with Jackie for a while now. Remember, she came to the clinic. This oh, year. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah That's I'm real proud great. of her. Good for her. Got That's her great. first ride in. Congratulations, Jackie. Good, good. Uh, Bill uh, Rose is watching. Sharing to Mules of Ohio. Storms and heavy rain, 83 degrees. Rusty is watching. Over on YouTube, asking any advice for a complete beginner on possibly getting a mule for hunting. 
education, education, education. Go on YouTube, watch all the different trainers, make a decision which trainer fits you the best and use them. Because if it don't work for you, don't use it. But don't just go buy a mule and say, okay, he's a push button mule because that cowboy said so. Nope, not, and nope. Every time we have a sale goes on, every time, all the big sales, all of a sudden I start getting phone calls and pictures. They said this mule did this and they said that mule did this. And this is supposed to be in such a good sale where everybody is honest, da, 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 da. Now, there are times, yes, that maybe somebody may have did something dishonestly. There's that possibility. But folks, the biggest problem with mules and donkeys is me, you. That's the biggest problem. Now you can watch some of these guys and some of these gals and they ride and they are good. They can make a pig look like a cutting horse. I'm telling you. But don't think because you've seen all that good riding out there that you are going to be doing the same thing you are not. It's inevitable. I go to clinics and I would bring my mule and I'd say, okay, who here? can he's been riding 20 years hands fly up everywhere they just saw me ride this mule they just saw the mule do everything i wanted it to do everything that person climbs on that mule it's been riding 20 years 15 minutes later it looks like that mule wasn't even trained not the mule's fault you all just saw it you just saw the mule being worked with it's got to be your timing folks i know you see me do it and think ah but it's, it's good yeah it also took me 50 years to get there <laughs> yeah i never thought i'd be saying that 50 years wow anyway uh, let's go back uh you guys have to think about this it is your timing why do i tell you continually stay with the come along rope you don't need a halter you don't need to tie them up hey dave that reminds me scott don't we have a picture from scott over in north carolina yeah, we do right here. Hey, there it is. Here's Scott's mule. And Scott says this is his last hurrah. He's going to spend all the time with this mule. He's got all of my equipment. You can see he's got my, uh, let's see, which saddle is that? I'm not sure. It looks like it might be the ultralight, my saddle pad and cinches and stuff and bridge and breast collar. So now look, look here. The come along hitch is on the mule's head. He's been working this mule for a long time. Matter of fact, Scott, if you're out there, you can tell us how long you've had this mule and how long you've been trained on it. But look, folks, notice the come along hitch isn't quite right. The one that goes up over the ears, which is the second one there toward the middle, needs to be up closer behind the pole. And I told Scott that. But like he said, this mule is getting so good. Even if the halter, the come along rope is a little bit misadjusted, the mule still responds because he did everything right to start with you all. The come along hitch, the come along hitch, the come along hitch. Mules learn more by their nose than they do their mouth. Notice he's got the bridle on. So if the mule gets used to the bridle, got the saddle on, all these things. Good job, Scott. Congratulations. But that's what I'm saying, folks. Saddle them, clean them, clean their feet, do all the work. Don't bother tying them up. If they're really well trained, you, they'll stand still while you're doing it. Not a problem. Uh, next question here. <clears throat> this one's from Jason. Jason sent in an email saying, um, just bought my first mule <clears throat> and she's not relaxed with her bit. She's not been ridden a lot the last couple of years, so she just needs a little tune-up on her handle, i.e. stopping and turning. I was wondering if your trail riding bit would be a good fit to help get on track. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Okay, number one, the trail riding bit is actually a, a very good bit once your foundation has been in place, which comes from the Mule Riders Martingale. If you're going to train, if you're going to fix a problem or if 
you're going to build a new foundation or if you're going to build a foundation, not a new one, not starting over again, but having one where the animal has never been touched. It's the come along hitch, come along hitch, come along hitch. Nose first, nose training first. Then the mule riders martingale, like it shows on the picture there, like it shows on that picture of Scott with his mule. Notice the martingale. There it is. I designed that in order to keep the mule from throwing his head up in the air and taking the bit and taking off. All right. It's an excellent tool. Right now, he's kind of written on it. Right now, he's kind of asking some questions on it. But that's okay. Okay. But there is the come along hitch starting one. Starting two, the mule rise martingale. Number three, the finished bit, which is a correctional mouthpiece. Can I fix a problem when I'm in the trail? Yes. When I'm on the side of a mountain? Yes. But you first must build a foundation. And you do that with the Mule Riders Martingale. Next question I got comes from Gabrielle. She says, I have a Holstein steer that's 18 hands high. He has super straight back and an obvious lack of withers. Closest thing I could think of that would fit is a mule pad. A britchin works great on him, but I'm thinking a good saddle pad would go a long way since I can't afford a custom saddle for him yet. Please let me know what you'd recommend. Thanks. So I don't know what a Holstein steer is, but I do know that 18 hands high is pretty tall. What would you say to Gabrielle? Holstein is a milk cow. They're black and white. And she evidently steered this animal. In other words, he castrated him so that he would have brain surgery, which is a great idea. It makes him quite docile. Uh, would the pad be a good deal? I've never had it on a cow before, but I'd like to see it done. Yeah, I would. I'd, uh, I think that'd be fun to do. So yeah, give that a try. Um, and, and you just got to figure some way to, to tighten, to tie it on, which you could do with some nylon straps that you could do, but yeah, give that a try. Next question. This one comes in from Rebecca says uh bought a let's see oh goodness bought a mule on an auction site we've heard that before she goes yeah i know he is four and i want to start him over from scratch as he has a few bad habits i've seen already first and foremost being uh he does not respect the lead rope i have bought the come along and the halter am and am winding how, wondering how you can even get it on them. He panics in a small area, so not safe to rot, to stall him and do it, as well as very head shy. I've started him in a larger pen where he doesn't feel trapped and am working on step one. Basic, go up and touch him on the shoulder and back away. He is super herd bound and I have him with two mares I can control well. What advice would you give to Rebecca? Number one, get him away from the mares. Don't ever folks don't do this don't put your mule in a bunch a stall with a bunch of other animals let alone mares they become super subservient to a mare super subservient. they'll jump over a cliff for a mare yeah that bad so anytime you're going to train anytime you're in foundational training the mule the donkey must imperative must be in a 20 by 20 stall. That way they can keep their mind on life. It's important. You put them out with a bunch of other animals, you're gonna lose everything you had just done. Guaranteed, you're gonna see it time again, time again. Now, if you walk up and touch the shoulder, how many times have you done that now, okay? I hope you've done it three, six, nine, 12, and then you're done. Here's the problem, folks, is we overdo it. We're not building a foundation. You want to build a foundation. I walk up three times, I touch the shoulder. The third time is better than the first time. On the near side, the left-hand side, I'm done. Then I go to the off side and I walk up to it three times. I'm done, okay? My preference would be you get a come along hitch on that mule right away. Folks, a lot of you can, can use a metal gate and with a rope on it and you tie the rope to the metal gate 
have somebody to be able to when you once you kind of run the mule into that gate area swing the gate over closed and use that rope to tie off to a good post now you've got a squeeze chute now you can do what you want to do but my preference is have a round pin have the corral run your round run your your mule from your corral into the alley in into the round pin now again don't overdo it three six nine twelve today i'm going to do three times with the mule going around to counterclockwise and clockwise three times that's what i'm going to do by doing it three to the right three to the left there i'm starting to build a foundation next time i train three to the right three to the left plus i add three more to the right and left now I'm building a foundation. You all see it? The problem is when we're training, we tend to overdo it. Oh, we're doing good. Let's keep on going. No, 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 no. Quit. Quit. Don't keep going. Because if you keep going, you're not building a foundation. You're going to blow their mind. Yes, you are. Build a foundation. Go slow. Okay. Uh, so that would be my preference. You can get in a round pin. And then get their feet to stop. That makes a big difference. And then it, there's more to it than we we can do a six hour show on round pin work. Maybe we should one day. Uh, let's see here. Maybe you all should come out to Queen Valley Mule Ranch one day when we do a clinic and we'll do a six hour show on round pin work. Uh, next question. This one comes from Randy. Send an email in uh, saying, uh, I hope you answer this question. Well, hope delivered. Can a mule colic uh, do not feed, but not feeding the same time every day? Sometimes I feed two hours early. I was told that it is not good for the muler, m mule, I think. Can a mule colic, I don't feed the same time every day? What would you say, Steve? Yes, a mule can colic. And, it, and it, colic, folks, is a variety of things. It's basically where the muscles around the large and small intestines are tightening up around the intestines and you end up with a colic situation. You can also get a colic from uh, thunderstorms because the mule becomes nervous. You can also get a colic from feeding incorrect feed and you can also get grass founder from feeding incorrect feed. So that's, that takes care of the colic. Now, um, Anytime you're training folks, you want to feed the proper feed at the proper time. You always want to do that. But proper time doesn't matter. You don't have to feed every day at six o'clock. No, you may want to go riding at six o'clock. So this is what I want to tell you. I, 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 this is the way I do it on the ranch. When I had 20 head here and I'm training all the time, my meals, other people's meals, I fed them all they needed that night. If I had a mule that's pulling a wagon and that mule uh, was, was burning a lot of energy, I would feed him according to his energy level that he needs. I'm going to add whole oats to give him that energy. If I got a mule that I'm just starting out, that I'm just doing come along work with, and I'm only spending 15, 20 minutes in the morning, 15, 20 minutes at night, then I'm not going to feed them quite so much. And I'm not going to feed them any oats. Remember, whole oats, not crimped oats. All right, now, let's keep on going. You don't have to worry about feeding any particular time. I've, all these years, I've cowboyed. I've cowboyed, and we uh, bring our animals in in the morning, put a morale on their head. They eat their oats. We, we saddle them all up, climb on and ride off. Yep. That's what we do. Did we feed them that, that morning? No, no, we went to work. We went to, we fed them all they needed the night before. And that morning, all we did was give them some oats to give them energy, to get them going. You don't need to feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner folks. That's why you and I look like we do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
because we're overfeeding ourselves and we overfeed our meals. We're taking a donkey foot and we're putting a horse body on it and it doesn't work. You'll end up with all kinds of problems. So don't worry about the feeding. Just feed them correctly. Get their teeth floated. Imperative. Every year. I don't care what that veterinarian says. Oh, you don't need that. Yes, you do. Every year, you float the teeth. You want to test it yourself now. Say, okay, Mr. Veterinarian, what do you think about this? Put your left hand on the nose, right hand on the jaw. Go right, left, right, left, and listen. If you hear that crunch, 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 guess what? The molars are rubbing together, and you got to have your teeth floated. They, the folks, they don't chew their feed. They grind their feed. Awesome. Hopping back over to our chat. First, I want to just say welcome to everyone who's hanging out with us. It's good to have you here today. If you haven't shared your biggest catch in the comment section, you've gone out, you've gone fishing, share your biggest catch. We would love to hear. We would love to know uh, what you have experienced. Put that in the comment section along with your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like. It'd be good to hear from you. Second thing, any and every mule and donkey question you got. And then third thing, I'm going to call on my YouTube people right here. YouTube people, y'all are slacking. We've only got three likes on the YouTube live stream. And I know more of you is watching. Go in there, click the like button, click the share button. Let us know that you love it. Let us know that you're enjoying it. I'm just giving y'all a hard time, but serious. It helps a big ton. So y'all share the broadcast. If you're on YouTube, click the like button, click the share button, send a text message to a friend or family member who uh, would love to hang out with us. If you're on Facebook, uh, you can click the like button and then click the share button as well. Send that over to your page. I uh, want to say uh, good afternoon right back to Captain Richard Matthews, Chaplain Steve and Chaplain Dave. Good to see you, Captain. Uh, Scott is watching from South Carolina where it is 94, hot and humid, waiting on a storm. Sounds like a song right there. I was waiting on a storm to come nearby. Uh, Bill Rose says a 12 pound flounder in South Carolina. How cool. Uh, Sue Callahan is watching says, Steve, if that mule wasn't touchy before with his ears, but is now, could he have some bites inside of those ears? There's a possibility, but there is where it either takes your ability with a nose twitch and folks that is my favorite tool when it comes down to dental work to shoeing to any type of of uh, uh, doctoring that nose twitch keeps the animals quiet creates natural endorphins and when you open and close it open and close it they get quiet could they have some type of mite yes tell you folks that's one thing i don't want you to ever do don't ever, ever, ever clean the hair out of the ears. Don't do that. Go ahead and clean it off straight on the outside. Like here's the ear. Just trim it off right here like this so it's straight. Leave it alone because that's a natural way that God gave those animals to keep the bugs and the dirt out of their ears. So, yes, it could have mites. But I can also tell you the 99.9% .9 of the time, partner, it is you moving too fast. It is you taken and put the bid in incorrectly. And by the way, answer those questions. Was it a 19 inch brow band? Number one. Number two, when did you have the T flowed in? Number three, what type of bit are you using? Awesome. I know he's been doing it for coming along too. Awesome, awesome. Uh, hopping back over, we got Cowboy Ken watching from Connecticut. We've got Larry, Ryan, and Rose watching from Franklin County, Virginia. 93 degrees, slight breeze, and we have our notebooks ready. Thank you. Uh, I love hearing that, Larry. Uh, send pictures of your notes when you're done. Send them on over. Support at MuleRanch.com. Julie uh, writes and says, my mule has a re rear, or no, real ear issue. A rear ear issue would be something. Uh, my mule has a real ear issue, so I don't ride with a brow band any longer. I give her a treat to get the bit in her mouth and attach the buckle of the head stall. Not good mulemanship, but at least I haven't had a head injury from her head and we are both happy. My mule head stalls have two small brow bands. 
If I have a problem with it staying in place, I tie it to the cavicin. We get along real well with this system. So it's not, you're not a proponent of treats, and it sounds like Julie knows that as well, but it sounds like she's worked on something that works for her. And I think that's something that we've said in the past. Uh, hey, I'm going to give you the information. I'm going to tell you what I've learned. You take it and you decide what works for you. Any comments there to Julie? Number one, the bridal brow band is what balances the bit in the mule's mouth. The most important part of the bridal is the brow band. Never, ever, ever, ever use a cavicin. Only thing that does is it teaches them to brace. And one day, Julie, I know you don't want to hear this. One day you're going to think, well, I got this mule now. And he's going to grab his butt and take off and you ain't going to be able to stop him. A cavison, folks, which is a strap that goes around behind the mouth that keeps the mouth shut. Only thing that does is teach the mule better habits. Now, here I am, Dave. You know, I'm always teaching the teachable moment, and I always try to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. Folks, allow the mule to have the time to pick up the bit and pack it. One, okay? Number two, always teach the mule to drop his head tip the nose to the left. By doing that, you've got him relaxed. Well, I want to hurry and get the bridle on so I can go right in that. Edit. No, 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 no. Relax. Relax. You'll end up like that little mule that we were just saw, a little white mule on a fight. It took almost two months to get that mule where he would drop his head and relax. Almost two months. A professional training all the time. Yeah, it wasn't easy. So, you know, there, there you are. I always have the teachable moment. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Barbara is watching from Steamy, Missouri. Dave O'Brien says, well, doing the first training with Steve Sursingle and Britchen, I was able to drop the come along rope on the ground and my Molly stood still. That rope makes all the difference in the world. Thank you. Hey, David, if you'd be okay with this, you don't have to say right now, if you'd be okay with us allowing to share a picture on the Queen Valley Mule Ranch website in the come along rope area of you with your mule, the lead rope on the ground, and you just standing right next to it with your hands up. I would love to put that there so folks can see the type of results that are possible with the come along rope. That would be really cool. That's what we're going for here. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Myra's watching. Hello, Steve and Dave. We're having a welcome, cooler, breezy day here in Southern California. Good for a norm mule time. With all the foundation work, I think I'm getting to be more of a mule myself. Not a bad, bad thing. Hey, Myra, not a bad thing to build in a strong foundation She's in your own self. What's that? She's super intelligent. Yeah, she is. Getting that strong foundation inside of you so that when the wind blows, it doesn't blow you down. That's good. Could use a little bit more of that in the world. Uh, Sherman Johnson is watching. Sh Johnson's taxidermy. Norman, Oklahoma, 101 degrees. Caught a seven-pound rainbow trout in a 35-pound spoonbill. That's pretty cool. How about that? Kevin is watching. And if y'all are wondering why uh, why Sherman put that in there, we want to know your biggest catch. S share with us your biggest catch of all time. Steve, it took a little while, but we've got it here. Kevin is watching from north of the 49th, Alberta, Canada. We've gone international, finally. Says, really like the wisdom you share with us. Thank you so much, Steve. Raymond says, a nine-foot striped marlin, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. That is neat. Uh, Candy is watching from Indiana, where it's hot and humid. Julie says, a 25-pound king near Uselet. British Columbia International. Awesome, Julie. Love it. Raymond uh, says, thank you, sir. Makes sense. Michelle is watching from Lanaray, Ca Canada. Gone International. Hilly Hole it says, I've had him for 11 and a half years. Had the mule we talked about earlier. Uh, Tamara says, hi from Australia. The land down under. Man, all of our friends are taking it. They must have gotten the it was a little delayed getting the invite out. So she says, I have a mule who is nine years old. She's been through a few homes and has some baggage. I've given her about six months with only working her every week or so. She can be very standoffish and timid. How do I build, how do you build confidence with a mule that has had baggage? 
Well, time consuming, yes. Come along, Hitch, most important. When you, you, you gotta remember folks, it's really easy to put baggage on these mules and donkeys. Using the wrong halter, using the wrong bit, incorrect bridle, the whole bit. You know, it, it, all, it all adds up. So you start from the ground and you do your come along work and you just go steady and consistent. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. Just stay steady and consistent. Enjoy each day. Do it. Do, do the steps of three, six, nine, twelve, and go from there. Now, that being said, some of these mules are just naturally unable to trust people. And they'll be going along really good. You're thinking, man, I got them good. And then all of a sudden they'll change. It happens. And some of these mules, it's not they've been hurt, but it's the way they've been bred. A sorry Jack or a sorry mare, that mind them from being a sorry Jack or mare is now in that mule and it's tough to get out. So I would say take your time, work the come along. Remember steps three, six, nine, twelve. You remember using the Sir single with the rope halter. Very important tools. Next question we got comes from Jackie says, hello, Steve. I have a nice gated mule, eight years old, 13, three hands. I've had him just two years. I have him in a wonder bit as the former owners used this bit. He has been uh, T ridden on a few trails and will lead or follow loads and will go where pointed. He is not spooky and tries hard to please yet. He is very stiff turning like a steering turning like steering a truck without power steering in a tough situation. I would not be able to bend or turn him. I have been flexing him on the ground, but don't feel he is progressing to the light touch I would like. I see your martingale as a possible solution. How does it work? I'd like for in more information before I consider a purchase. I'd appreciate any help you can provide. Well, number one, the wonder bit is a wonder anybody even got anything wrote at all. Take that bit and see how far you can throw it. Take a D9 cat and bury it in the ground so that you can't get back to it again. Only thing that bit is going to do is continue to make your meal stiff. I don't care how light your hands are. That wonder bit is, is a sorry bit to use on anything, but especially on a meal. They don't care about their mouth anyway, and you're just going to add to the problems. Okay, that's number one. Number two. Folks, don't do lateral flexions. You've got a mule. You don't have a horse. Don't do lateral flexions. Don't do that. Only thing that's going to do is cause you more problems. Lateral flexions, you bend the mule's neck around to the left, bend them around to the right, and it's supposed to loosen all five, five neck, neck muscles. Mm, might be on a horse, but not on a mule. Only thing you're going to do is take that donkey neck and make it strong. It's going to be like biceps when lifting weights and it's going to be muscled up. One day you try to turn and a lot of you folks can tell me about this too. You've probably been there. You went to bend their head around and they ran just as fast bent around as they did straight ahead. Yes, because we do lateral flexions and disengage hindquarters. Don't do either one. Will my meal right as Martin, right Martin Gale do the trick? Absolutely. Just ask the people out there in YouTube and and uh, and Facebook world. You'll hear them say so. Okay, I don't put much more out there on the internet about how to use it because it only the use of it only comes with the Barton Gale itself. You have a video that goes with it, and the video says do it like this. If you go on a lot of my website, a lot of my videos, you'll see it being used as well. It is the most important go-to tool. I use besides the come along hitch number one. Yeah, we've got lots of results that people have experienced uh, through it. And one of the questions that we'll frequently get is, well, I've got a bridle. Can I just get the double twisted wire snaffle bit? Or I have the double twisted wire snaffle bit. Can I just get the bridle? Or I have a snaffle bit. Can I just get 
the bridle? And the answer is no. And that's not for our benefit, that's for your benefit. One of the reasons why the video is exclusively available with the Mule Riders Martingale purchase is because we don't want people watching that video who don't have the Mule Riders Martingale as Steve sells it because it's not going to work and you're going to cause problems. The bridle and the bit are designed specifically to work together and no matter how close you think what you have is to the Mule Riders Martingale, it is not the same thing. So that's one of those deals where Steve put in all of the time over the decades to get this thing dialed in properly so that you get the results that we talk about you getting. It's not one of these deals where we just kind of put something together and we sell it as a combo and that's just, we sell it as a combo and the only reason why is because why? No, it's specific to the results you're going after. So that's why that is. That's a great question. Thanks so much for sending that over. Next one comes from Scott says, I was writing to find out if you guys do training for packing and riding. I have a 12 year old Molly and need her packing and riding ready. She is very calm and seems to catch on quick to the little I've done with her. However, I'm carrying a full-time job working a colt and finishing three other horses for an upcoming deer and elk hunt. I simply don't have time or mule experience to get her up and running too. If you guys can provide training, please let me know. If you can't, uh, can't do it, it can you please send me trainer info in the Idaho, Utah, Wyoming area. Now, I've told Scott that we don't do training, but I put it in this show because I thought it would be a good discussion for even if Scott doesn't have the time, what should Scott be looking for in somebody who would be doing this? Or if he decides he wants to take the time, how should he approach it? Scott, you're bound to have four to six hours a week, partner. You're bound to be able to find 15 minutes here, 30 minutes there, four to six hours a week. That's all you need. And all you need for a pack meal is use the come along hitch. That's all. Actually, it's all you need for any of your meals. You all should be using the come along hitch for everything. So look, worst thing you can do folks is send these mules out to these so-called trainers. I hear these stories constantly and it's not pretty. And you're gonna spend a lot of money and get a lot of headaches, especially guys who wanna use their own saddles yeah, and their own bits. Yep, there we are Dave. Awesome. Now. I, I'm asking this out of ignorance. Sometimes I know the answer, but I want to hear. But I know that other folks will appreciate hearing it from you. So sometimes I know it. I don't know the answer here. Knowing how subservient mules are to horses, donkeys are to horses. Could you just pony the mule and let him walk behind one of the horses? And wouldn't that? I mean, wouldn't that get you? pretty far versus having to do the packing and lead the mule by himself? Well, yeah, it would get you pretty far, but there again, Dave, on the ground, don't need to be in the saddle, do all the ground work, get him squared away. Listen, I, in, in probably less than two hours, maybe three at the most, you can have that mule just changing around night and day. Don't go take him to some trainer and spend a thousand dollars to have a month's worth of training and you end up having two months worth of work to fix the problems. Don't do that. Um, I, 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 I don't have any apprentices in that area and all of my apprentices right now are buried. So you know, with a lot of work. Uh, next question comes from uh, Miss Backwoods over on YouTube. Good to have you here, Miss Backwoods. What books about mules and training would you recommend? We have a few and our first mule arrives in a couple of weeks. She's 15 months and we understand she can't be ridden till three years, but we'd like to train her for draft and cart pulling. What books would you recommend? What would you recommend to Miss Blackwood? You know, I can't really tell you about a book um, that would help you out. Uh, I've, I've got one book in particular, and I can't even think of what the name is right now, but they did a few pages with me doing some different things on it as well. But as far as a book, I don't know of any. Uh, the only books that I would say to go to would be Dr. Robert Miller. And he focuses on horses as well as mules doing uh, uh, colt starting, uh, using uh, babies and how to train them. He does a lot of imprint stuff. 
because Dr. Miller started that stuff here in the States. Uh, but don't know of any books at all. I've got almost 400 videos out there that'll help you out a lot. But the main thing you all need to do is the come along rope. Use the come along. Get used to that. Do good with it. Then you'll have it. Awesome. I want to give a thank you to Candy, to Hannah, uh, to Michelle for sending out uh, shares to uh, on Facebook. I'm trying to see if it'll let me. It won't show me any others. It says we've got 15 people sharing on Facebook. And so Candy, Hannah, and Michelle are the only ones Facebook will let me see. I want to say thank you to all of you and to everybody else, the 12 additional folks. I want to say uh, thank you as well. And then over on YouTube, y'all got your act in order. I gave you a little bit of a, hey, let's get some likes. Y'all went back over to YouTube and clicked like. That's pretty good. I like that. All right. Uh, Kevin has a question. Says I don't have a mule of my own, but I'm asking by a friend. But asked by a friend to help with the trainer of their mule. Highly recommend that they watch your channel. That's awesome. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Uh, Rusty says thank you for answering his question. I'm sure I'll have tons more in the future, and we'll be here. Uh, Bill says Steve's pads are the best out there. Gave you gold, silver, and bronze. You swept them. Steve's pads swept all the awards. Eileen is watching from sunny 86 degrees with rain coming in from dry Nebraska. Aaron says looking for the right question to ask a farrier to make sure they know the difference between a horse hoof and a mule hoof to get the right cut of a foot. This is a great question. What is something that Aaron could ask a farrier knowing that the answer will determine whether or not this farrier has the experience necessary to shape the foot properly. Yep. Number one problem, folks, with these mules is their foot is made of a donkey's foot. It's the worst foot you can get, that donkey foot. So the first thing I would ask my farrier how do you fix a contracted heel? What's a contracted heel? Here's the back of the heels, okay? And one side is in tighter than the other, or the center frog is really hard and not very pliable. But fixing a contracted heel, how do you do it? And they need to answer that question for you. That's good. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Aaron. Really, really good. Jackie says 35 pound salmon caught in Alaska. That's really cool. Mike is watching from New Mexico where it's hot and humid. Miss Backwoods. Hey, we, I hope you heard us answer your question there. Good evening from Northern Maine. I just purchased my first mule ever. I've been watching your videos, your halters. I wanted to ask you what to recommend. So you heard us answer that there. Glad that you're here, Miss Backwoods. Uh, hey, Yolanda says, still alive, even though there is a farmer's war going on out here. Man, I don't mean to make light of that. I'm wondering what that looks like, Yolanda. Uh, give us a heads up. Roger is watching from Milan, New York, currently in Helena, Montana, 82 and cloudy. Michelle is watching. Biggest and best catch ever was my wife 28 years ago. How about that? All right. If anyone knows Michelle's wife, get her over here onto this live stream so she can check out the comments and we can get some uh, Michelle some bonus points. Uh, Paul is watching, says, when can you come to South Carolina? Anytime you want, Paul. The best way to get Steve out there is if you want to host a clinic, uh, you can host a clinic and you can call Steve and he'll get you all the details. Or if there's a clinic or expo going on, and they're taking uh, clinicians, you can contact them and tell everybody in your area to contact them as well and say, hey, we need Steve Edwards here or else it ain't gonna be worth attending. That's how you get them out there. Always give Steve a call if you'd like to host a clinic, Paul. Um, always looking for opportunities to do that. Mindy is watching, loving my first live clinic. Mindy watching from Awani, Awani California. Uh, Mindy, we have a city here called Awatuki. And so at first I thought it was a, a, a mistype for Awatuki, but it's Awani, California. Good to have you here. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, 80 with 90% humidity, road cookie, 13 miles today with my Steve Edwards tack. Love to hear that. Miss Backwood says my biggest catch is a six foot two Navy veteran. That is quite the catch right there. Make sure you take good care of that catch, Miss Backwoods. 
Uh, Richard is watching from Sierra Vista de, or Sierra Australia de Arizona. Uh, good to have you here. Steve, you want to say something to uh, uh, Mr. Richard Desarde La Sierra Australia de Arizona? Wow. Uh, hola, como esta, amigo? Mucho trabajo este día por los mulas. Uh, me gustan los mulas, pero muy fuerte por las montañas. And me gustan, pero muy inteligente, verdad. There you go. There you go, Richard. That one's for you. Uh, Mindy says, biggest catch, a gorgeous Dorado halfway between Hawaii and California. Very Dorado. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Scott from Hilly Hole Farm says, have had this one for about one and a half years. So we were talking about that earlier. There we go. Uh, Richard says, it's 43 degrees in my yard Celsius. See, he was trying to get us right there. He got us for a second. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, Miss Backwood says, thank you so much. Hey, Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the bossy one eyed mule, steamy and 84 Fahrenheit in rural Ohio. Good to have you here, Linda. Mindy says, can you recommend a source for mule nutrition? I'm getting ready to provide a home for a retired pack mule from Yosemite National Park. And I'd like to delve deeply into mule nutrition so they can have a happy retired life. Now I'm going to put a link to both the Feed Talk video, Steve, and the Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. While I get those, uh, just give a couple words of encouragement to Mindy there. Well, I'm all Yosemite Mules. They probably deserve their last days being out uh, well taken care of by a little gal. And, and then them old guys, I wouldn't mind at all putting on a pasture uh, for a little bit at a time. They have earned it, you know, a good Yosemite meal. Um, here's the thing, folks. Those mules have put their their lives on uh, on the trail, and they they serve every day. And now their legs are gone, and their tendons are tired, and it's time to just stand around and kind of enjoy the last days. And that's a good deal. Uh, teeth floating, very very important, very very important. Uh, also, the other thing to consider is make sure they have plenty of roughage. So uh, that would be really helpful. In other, in other words, like uh, hay, because these mules, uh, these are retired mules. You're not going to be riding them. I understand. Just going to be more of a of a yard ornament. So uh, don't overfeed them. That's really important. Put a, yeah. Put a comment section in the, or put in the comment section two links. Uh, that's going to give you more than anything we could say here, Mindy. And uh, I believe at the end of that you'll have a, a good amount of confidence to be able to make a decision on nutrition and, and get going. And as always, we're here to help. Um, let me hop back over here. Karen says, love your videos. Miss Backwood says, been watching your videos. And Ryan, my hubby, purchased the kit. Excited to be learning from you. Hey, we are just as excited to have you here. Sincerely mean that. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun to do these, uh, but it's even more fun to get the text messages and the videos and the comments from folks saying that uh, they're finally able to get the results that they were looking for after, you know, so many of them thinking that they were going to, you know, kind of just turn it in and not not do anything with the mules or donkeys anymore. That's that's a lot of fun. Uh, Bill says Meredith Hodges has some excellent driving information on donkeys and mules for our friends who were talking earlier. Uh, Yolanda says that there are thousands of farmers on the roads blocking all supply stores. And yesterday evening, uh, there was a uh, farmer's son almost killed by police, but the police was shooting it. We had something similar to this in Canada over here in North America. We had, uh, all of the supply routes, the roads blocked by uh, Canadian truckers several months ago. And so, uh, stay safe, Yolanda. Um, Jack is watching from Johannesburg, checking in late today, 75 and sunny, better late than ne never. Uh, Jack says he uh, caught an 85 pound sturgeon. That's pretty cool right there. Whoa. 85 pound sturgeon. Lori is watching from Michigan, says love my new saddle and pad from Steve. Love hearing that, Lori. Mindy says thank you so much for the nutrition information. They're going to be out on 10 acres of mountainous pasture, and I promise I will not overfeed. Oh, all right, Mindy. So glad you put that last little bit in there. Uh, Steve, 15 seconds on your thoughts regarding out to pasture. Well, when I sit out in the pasture now, I didn't mean to go out there and put them out there for the rest of their lives. Put them out for a short time and bring them back. And that's going to depend 
on the time of the year, the time of feed, because here's the problem. If you put them out there when the carbohydrates are heavy, the sugar and the feed is really rich, you can cripple that mule in a short time. So want to be careful. Uh, I tell you what a lot of people do in day, they buy a muzzle from me and they turn the mules out in the pasture because they don't have a corral. My preference is always corral, but, oh, excuse me, oh, pardon me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but here's the thing, the old retired mule, he still needs your care. He needs to have his feet trimmed, teeth floated, things like that. Okay. But don't turn him out there where he's going to grass founder himself. Keep track of him. Watch his poop. If he's the only one out there, that's really good. Okay. And watch his poop because that'll tell you a lot, the road apples. All right. Let's see here. Steve, we'll try and get you out of here in a few minutes. I just rescued, this one's coming from Ryan. I just rescued a 15 month old Molly mule from a kill pen in Texas. I'm a total beginner to mules. The plan with her is to eventually have her pull a small cart that can hold one person and go into town. Maybe even eventually get a second one to help draft. Where would I begin training? She arrives from Texas to Northern Maine in about three to four weeks. I saw the ground foundation set, but we have no history of her. I have only seen videos of her being good with her ears and lifting feet for the person. Please help. What would you say to Ryan? Well, your ground communication kit is the most important thing, folks. When you get them home, put them in a 20 by 20 stall, feed them correctly with your nutrition. We've got the videos on that. And uh, the, the big thing to do, folks, is you spend time with them. Don't drown them the first few hours. You know, it's four to six hours a week is a lot of training. But uh, the big thing you can do is get the come along hitch on them, start doing your come along work. That's the most important thing you can do. It's not important to ride. It's not important to put a saddle on. I can't tell you how many people I've told not to put some old junk saddle. Well, they don't want to put their good saddle on. Well, I understand that. But you go put in some old junk saddle that doesn't fit correctly, you're building a foundation for this mule's whole life. Don't go putting junk on them. Very good. Uh, I think that's everything. Uh, Linda says, since Theo has gone bossy on me, I'm so glad for the time I spent using and learning Steve's come along rope. We are working on nose lessons again. He's never been bossy before in three years uh, before in three years. So I was taken by surprise, but I feel confident because I know what to do because of Steve. So here's the thing. This is a really great example, Steve, of the animal. Everything just goes one year, two year, three year, four year, ever, ever so similar. And then all of a sudden yep. something changes. You talked about, I think, uh, Stacy one year just blowing up because a piece of grass was somewhere, Something like that. Talk about that real quick, because what Linda's experiencing, that's not unique. Yeah, well, we was coming through this gate, and all of a sudden this weed was right by this rock and this, this stump. That rock and stump had been there for years at that gate. And Stacy had walked by it time and time again. Stacy's my wife's mule. And that little blade of grass was just wiggling in the wind. And it scared her, caught her off guard, and she jumped pretty heavy. So folks, it's flight and fright because they are an equine. Awesome. Uh, last comment here. We've got Thomas from Nashville. What's the best way to catch a mule that gets loose? Any special treatment to get them to not get out after they're car caught? This will be our last question, Steve. You know, there's no easy way of doing that, folks. Uh, I listened to a guy the other day was telling me he had ran this mule down for almost five hours other people chasing it and this sort of thing. You always want to have a secondary plan where you have a small catch corral someplace that you're feeding in to get them to go to. There's not an easy way. Awesome. Hot dog. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching today. Uh, appreciate it. It's been good to have you here. It's been good to see you. Last week I was out of town, so it was a pre-recorded video. Uh, if you didn't watch that, go back, watch it. It was a great show. Lots of really good stuff. So Y'all sent in some great questions. We added a few videos and uh, Steve had just gotten off a nap. So he was super, super energetic and wound up. Just giving you a hard time, Steve. I'm feeling it a little bit too. Uh, folks, it's good to have you here each and every week. Uh, if you are not receiving the email invitations, every time we go live, I'm putting a link in the comment section. Y'all can click on that. Just type in your name and your email address. And uh, next week when we go live, 
it'll go ahead and it'll send you an email notification so you don't forget. If you're not listening to the Mule Ranch podcast, I'm going to put a link in the comment section. These are all of the past episodes that we have had, but in audio form. So you don't have to watch on YouTube. You don't have to watch on Facebook. You can actually just go into whatever podcast program you listen to. Uh, you listen with, whether it's uh, Apple Podcasts or whether it's, um, uh, let's see here, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, whatever the case might be, y'all can go in there and you can uh, subscribe and you can listen just to the audio. And it's really great listening. So do that. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done here? Nope. We're done, partner. We're done. We're going to, we're going to uh, go out here and get some things done. It's kind of cooling off a little bit. I think it was only 100 degrees here. Let's see here. Yeah, it's uh, it's only 102 out there now. 11% humidity. So shoot, cool enough, I can go out and get something done. That's true. All right, everyone, take care. We'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.